Welcome to the next lesson in functions. In this lesson, we're going to be looking at the hyperbola. Now, hyperbola is an interesting graph. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use it here to get with every other lesson on functions that we practice up. We're going to be using a table to plot some points to understand the shape of the hyperbola. So, the general formula of the hyperbola, the most basic formula of the hyperbola, is y is equal to k over x. Where k is any constant, any number really, any number. In this case, we're using y is equal to 2 over x. y is equal to 2 over x. So if we do this, we're going to basically, for every x, we're going to substitute in um, these numbers, just like we did before with the table. So let's write it down over here. The y is equal to 2 over minus 4. So y is equal to 2 over minus 4 becomes minus 2 divided by 4, which is minus a half. So that there is minus a half. 2 divided by minus 2 is minus 1. 2 divided by minus 1 is minus 2. 2 divided by 0. 2 divided by 0 is undefined. So I'm going to write a u here for undefined because anything divided by 0 is undefined. 2 divided by 1 is 1. 2 divided by 2. 2 divided by 2 is... Sorry, 2 divided by 1 is 2. Sorry, 2 divided by 1 is 1. And 2 divided by 4, it's just a positive version of this, so it's going to be a half. And you'll notice that this looks like a little bit like a mirror. In fact, it is a mirror. There's minus a half, a half. Minus one, one. Minus two, two. Okay, so let's plot these points and then see what we get to get. So let's start on the left hand side where we've got minus four, which would be over here, and minus a half, which is over here. Then we've got minus two and minus one. And we've got minus one, minus two. So the shape that we're getting, if I can get this right. There we go. Okay. Looks like that. Let's plot the others. When x is 1, y is 2. So when x is 1, y is 2. When x is 2, y is 1. And when x is 4, y is a quarter. And again, we're just going to... Oh, okay. There we go. Drain those drops. Like that. So now, you will notice that what have we actually got? We've actually got two halves of graph. We have got a graph in the first quadrant. This quadrant here, the top right-hand quadrant, is called the first quadrant. And then we go around to the anti-clockwise. So this would be the second quadrant. This is the third quadrant. And this is the fourth quadrant. The fourth quadrant. So you'll notice that if we've got a positive hyperbola, positive equation of hyperbola, what do we get? We get two graphs that are in the, the first and the third. So the first note we can make is that a positive hyperbola gives us graphs in the first and the third quadrants. Okay, quadrants. So we should expect that our hyperbola, unless we've limited it, unless we said, oh, we only drawing for x is positive, or we only drawing for x is negative. You are going to get two graphs, okay? And in this case, you see, because this is a positive number, we've got the first quadrant and the third. And it makes sense because, yeah, these are positive and these are positive, and these are negative and these are negative, and a minus sum is a minus negative plus, which is why it ends up being in that quadrant over there. Now, let's talk about this dude over here, the undefined dude. If you look here, you will see that this graph, <clears throat> and let's look at this one because this one's drawn a bit better. This graph is actually going to carry on, and it's going to get closer and closer and closer to the x-axis. But it's never, ever actually going to touch the x-axis. And similarly, it's going to get closer and closer to the y-axis, but it's never, never, never going to touch the y-axis. So what is happening here is that we have things that are called asymptotes, asymptotes, and asymptotes are lines where there are no graphs, in other words they have got an undefined value, so 
so they never cross. So the asymptote for this graph, the asymptote, okay, the asymptotes are x equals naught, the x-axis, and y equals naught, the third one, y-axis, x-axis. So you understand that. These graphs are never, ever, ever going to touch that. Now let's talk about the domain and range. The domain. The main, remember, is the x axis. Which value is this graph is going to be valid for across the x axis? So, again, as you see, it goes all the way along, push, 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 all the way along, all the way to minus infinity. Doesn't cross the, the zero line, but then it carries on from very close to zero, okay, and then all the way along to positive infinity. There are two ways we can write this. The one that we can write, which is probably the easiest one, is that x is just an element of real values, but x is never going to equal zero. Okay? That's probably the easiest way you can write it. You can also write this minus infinity to positive infinity, but x does not equal zero. Right. Let's talk about the range. The range range is how far the graph stretches across the y-axis. And again, if you look here, you can see that this graph is going to carry on, 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 to being close and close to the y-axis. So it's never going to quite touch the y-axis. Okay, and then it's going to go down, 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 as close as possible to the zero, but never quite. Similarly, yeah, it's going to start very, very close to zero, but then it's going to go down, 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 all the way to minus infinity. So again, exactly the same, y is an element of real values, so y does not equal naught. Right, let's see what happens now if we do some things to this equation and what type of graphs we have. So let's start with a negative 2 over x. So I just want to change, I don't really like that, I think it's worked the whole time. So, might as well be a teacher, that's what I am. So, <laughs> right, y is equal to minus 2 over x. So this time, if we substitute it, we get y is equal to minus 2 over minus 4. So minus 2 over minus is a plus, 2 over 4 is a half. This time we get a half. If it's minus 2, it's minus 2 divided by minus 2, which is 1. Minus 2 divided by minus 1, and minus 1 is minus is a plus, and then it just becomes 2. And then we're going to leave that out for a minute, but we know it's undefined anyway. And then, let's have a look at this. Minus 2 divided by 1 is just minus 2. Minus 2 divided by 2 is minus 1. And minus 2 divided by 4 is minus a half. So again, do you see we've got that nice little mirror image going on? Half, minus a half, 1, minus 1, 2, minus 2. Now let's plot this and see where they lined up. So when x is minus 4, y is a half. So this time we start up here. If x is minus 2, y is 1. And if x is minus 1, y is 2. So this time, you can see the graph is in the what quadrant? What did we say this quadrant was? We said it was the second quadrant. This is the first quadrant. I'm going to use the Roman numerals this time. Second quadrant, the third quadrant, and the fourth quadrant. The reason I'm using the Roman numerals is because most textbooks these days use the Roman numerals. So I want you to get used to it. So first, second, third, and fourth. Let's plot these other points here. So it's 1 over minus 2. So x is 1, y is minus 2. x is 2, y is minus 1. x is 4, y is minus a half. And let's see if I can do it better. There we go. It's much more exciting. Okay, so there you go. So do you see that if we have a negative hyperbola, which quadrant are we going to end up in? We're going to end up in the quadrants 2 and 4. So that's our first note, a negative quadrant, I mean negative hyperbola, hyperbola is going to give us which quadrants? It's going to be the second quadrant and the fourth quadrant. And again it makes sense because if you look at this, we've got a positive times a negative, which is going to give us a negative. Or we've got positives times negative, which is going to give us a negative again. 
Right, now let's talk again about this undefined. As you can see, again, we are not touching the x-axis and we are not touching the y-axis. So again, we've got asymptotes, there we go. Uh, your x-axis and your y-axis, you see that? So that is your asymptotes, there are your asymptotes. So this time your asymptotes are again going to be asymptotes. Are just going to be that x equals naught and y equals naught. So when it asks you to write the equation of the asymptote, you can't write naught. You have to say x equals naught or y equals naught. Okay, let's talk again about the domain. Again, it's going to be exactly the same as the previous graph because if you look here, it stretches all the way to minus infinity, gets close and close and close to zero, doesn't hit zero. Starts here near zero, but never quite gets there, and goes all the way to plus infinity. So again, I'm just going to make it nice and easy for myself. X is an element of real value, but X cannot equal zero. And the range, again, very easy. Stretches all the way up, 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 up to plus infinity. Gets close and close and close to zero. Doesn't quite make it. Starts very close to zero, and then goes all the way down to negative infinity. So there we've got y is an element of real values, so y does not equal 0. Now let's look at what happens when we add a plus 1 to our parabola. Do you remember when we were doing the parabola and we had y is equal to ax cubed x squared plus q? What happened when we added that q? Do you remember that it did something to it? If you recall, the plus q moved the graph up when it's positive and moved the graph down when it was negative. Let's see if this does the same thing. But now we need to plot the points. Okay, so again, we're going to go y is equal to 2 over minus 4 plus 1, which is minus a half plus 1 which is just a half, okay, and obviously I don't want to do it on green, so let's change the color, mm, which one is it just, okay, so it's going to be a half, 2 divided by minus 2 is minus 1, minus 1 plus 1 is 0, 2 divided by minus 1 is minus 2, minus 2 plus 1 is minus 1, I want to leave this out for a minute. I want you to see what happens, and then we can talk about it. Okay, when x is 1, you've got 2 divided by 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 3. 2, x divided by 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1 plus 1 is 2. And now we've got 2 divided by 4, which is a half, plus 1 is 1 and a half. And very sadly, you can see we don't have that nice symmetry we had before. So something has happened. So let's plot these points and have a look at what's happened. So when x is minus 4, y is a half. When x is minus 2, y is 0. And when x is minus 1, y is minus 1. So do you see that we've actually crossed what before was our asymptote? We've crossed it. Okay. So that's what's happened there. Let's have a look at the next numbers that we need to plot. We've got when x is 1, y is 3. When x is 2, y is 2. And when x is 4, y is 1.5. So now we need to just again plot these points. There we go. Nice and easy, right? Okay, so do you see this graph has actually moved up from what it was before? So, what do we think has happened here? What's actually happened, if I had to substitute this in, y is equal to 2 divided by 0, which is undefined, plus 1. So I'm going to change the color here, because what we're actually saying then, I'm going to take it again, we're saying that this is our new asymptote. Our original asymptote was 0, so whatever we're adding to this, becomes a new asymptote. So the asymptote now is y equals 1. 
With this, we haven't moved it left to right. We've only moved the 12 up by 1. So that's messed with our horizontal asymptote. But our vertical asymptote stays the same because we haven't moved it left to right. Okay. So if we look at our asymptotes now, with our asymptotes, we have to write them down. They would be still that x equals 0, but that y is equal to 1, right? Because this graph never quite gets to y equals 1, okay? And again, never quite gets to y equals 1. So this actually affects also the domain and the range. So let's talk about the domain. The domain doesn't affect the domain. Let's have a look. It stretches all the way to negative infinity. It goes closer and closer and closer to zero. It goes very close to zero and it goes all the way to positive infinity again. So no, it doesn't affect the domain at all. X is still an element of real values and X does not equal zero. But let's just talk about the range, the range, which is our Y values. Do you see this graph has actually changed now? Before it used to be getting closer and closer to this line over here, the x-axis. But now it's getting closer and closer to the y equals 1 line. So what we see is that this graph carries on from minus infinity all the way closer, closer, closer to y equals 1. Starts off very close to y equals 1 and then goes up, 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 up to positive infinity. So what's going to happen now is the y is going to be an element of real values. We agree with that. But this time, y cannot equal 1. So in other words, this plus 1, what did it do? It moved the graph up. Just like it did in here. Okay. So you can see that there's a pattern. Okay. Let's look at the next one. This time, we've got minus 1. So what do you think it's going to do? It makes sense that it should move this graph down. But let's check it. Let's do the numbers, make sure that we actually do get what we expect. Right, so y is equal to 2x minus 1. So it's going to be 2 divided by minus 4 minus 1, which is going to be minus 1 and a half. Minus 2, 2 divided by minus 2 is minus 1. Minus 1 is minus 2. 2 divided by minus 1 is minus 2. Minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3. Again, we're going to leave this alone and see what happens. If x is 1, we've got 2 divided by 1 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Minus 1 is 0. 2 divided by 4 is a half. Minus 1 is minus a half. Okay, so let's now plot this. So if we've got x equals minus 4, y is going to be minus 1 and a half. If x is minus 2, y is going to be minus 2. And if x is minus 1, y is minus 3. So now the graph has seemed to have moved down a bit. So our hypothesis that this minus is pulling it down seems to make sense, but let's just carry on. Okay, so then if x is 1, y is 1. If x is 2, y is 0. <coughs> and if x is 4, y is minus a half. So again, have a look at that. We'll set this again. There we go, we saw it. So again, you will see that we've crossed the x axis, which is our previous asymptote. Now, let's substitute in a zero. Okay, and again, I'm going to change colors because we're talking about asymptotes here. So, when x is zero, two divided by zero is undefined, and we end up with minus one. So what we now realize is that this has moved the graph down, and our new horizontal asymptote is y is equal to minus one, whereas our x I mean, the vertical horizontal remains the same. So exactly the same as last time. We can slip there. You can see that this y is equal to minus 1. So exactly the same. Your asymptotes, your horizontal asymptote is now y equals minus 1. 
and your vertebral asymptote is exhibited. So let's have a look at what effect it has on the domain and range. So domain, domain again is your x values. So let's have a look. Do you see it stretches all the way to minus infinity? It gets closer and closer and closer to zero. Okay, it gets closer and closer to zero. Then it goes very close to zero. And then it goes all the way to positive infinity. So it's the same as it was before. It hasn't shifted at all. So x is an element of real values. x cannot equal zero. But let's look at our range. Our range, we have got it stretching all the way to positive infinity and then crossing the zero line and getting closer and closer to y equals minus one, but never touching it. And then it starts on this side, very close to minus one, but then it goes down, 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 all the way to negative infinity. So this time, it's y is an element of real values. For y does not equal minus one. So therefore, what does this minus mean? It means it shifts or moves the graph down. Okay, so that's quite easy, okay? Right, um, so to summarize everything that we've learned so far, we've got a general form where is y is equal to ax plus q. Remember I said to you it is y is equal to k over x. That's the very basic, but now we've learned some shifting. So we know that the standard form is y is equal to a over x plus q. And he said if a was bigger than 0, then it would be in quadrants 1 and 3. And I'm just going to sketch a little drawing there. Where we know that the quadrants are 1, 2, 3, and 4. So if a is bigger than 0, which quadrants are they going to be? And it's quadrants 1 and 3. And if a is smaller than 0, then the quadrants are going to be 2 and 3. Four. So let me make all this nicely for you. So if it's bigger than naught, it's going to be in quadrants one and three. And if it is smaller than naught, then um, then it's going to be or negative, then it's going to be in quadrants two and four. Also, we know that if q is bigger than naught, then what does it do? It shifts the graph up, and then obviously that messes with your asymptotes. And it messes with your what? Your range. It messes with your asymptotes and it messes with your range. And again, if the graph, if the Q is small north, the graph is shifted down. And again, it's going to mess with your asymptotes and your range. So, and there's a pretty good chip. So let's do an example. Let's just do one proper example where we didn't just be trying to work it out. This is how you would do it if you were doing this in the test for exam. So we've got x, y equals 16. So the first thing we do is go y is equal to 16 over x. Okay, <clears throat> so you realize that there's no shifting. So I would immediately go, okay, fine, well, this is cool. We know that my asymptotes are going to be the x and y axis. Okay, so that's cool. So I can even, before I do this question, I can fill in the range in the domain. But let's do it afterwards. Now, all I would do is I would substitute in some positive and negative values. So I'd do exactly the same as what we did before. I'd say if x is 1, y, okay, let's not do 1 because I don't have a graph that goes up to 16. So let's go for x is 4. If x is 4, y is 4. So if x is 4, y is 4. If x is 2, y is 8. And if x is 8, y is 2. Okay, nice and easy. Now we try the negatives. If x is minus 2, 16 divided by minus 2 is going to be minus 8. If x is minus 4, 16 divided by minus 4 is going to be minus 4. Oopsie. Hold up. Wait for a second. There we go. Minus 4. And if x is minus 8, y is minus 2. And then we just join our dots as best as possible. And again, remember, you have a pencil and eraser. I have a slippery sketch pad. So you need to make sure that your graphs look... Wow, that's not good. Actually, as good, if not better than mine. Okay, 
So there we go, we've got our two graphs. We noticed that that's in the first and the third quadrant, which we expected because this is a positive graph. Now we just need to do the domain and range. And like I said before, because asymptotes are where they're supposed to be, we can say that the domain is going to go from minus infinity, skipping zero, all the way to positive infinity. So I would just say the domain is x is an element of real values, but x does not equal zero. So means the range is going to tip all the way from positive infinity all the way down, da, 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 close to zero, not quite getting there, starting off very close to zero, and then going all the way to minus infinity. So y is an element of real values, y does not equal zero. See, not that bad, hey? Okay, so that is it, grade 10s for hyperbolas. You need to go and practice. You only really need, as you saw in the previous example, I only plotted, I only oopsie, plotted three points. You only really need to plot three points to get your shape. So you should know the hyperbola now. So then it's very easy for you to plot the points. And it's always, always good to show the people that you know what you're doing by saying what these points are. So for example, you would say that this is 2, 8, and then randomly that this one is minus 4, minus 4. Just to show that you actually did substitute in valid numbers for this. Go and practice grade 10s and then do the assessment at the end of the section. Have a lovely day.